So today on Tricycle Talks, we have Joseph Tayano, uh, who is a managing director and a global head of marketing for consumer and manufacturing industries at Accenture. Tricycle Talks is a show where we chat with B2B marketing and sales professionals and share valuable insights from the field with other professionals. So I was privileged to uh, coach Joe a few months ago and to help him take his efforts on social to the next level. At Tricycle Europe, we help B2B professionals like Joe and their global organizations to win in the social space. And we always want to do more. So thanks for being here today, Joe. How's things going? Hey, thanks for having me, Eric. I'm thrilled to be here. Cool. Me too. So, you know, we had quite a journey uh, a couple of months ago. I had a lot of fun and you really took to this like it was second nature and is now part of your uh, strategy, part of your DNA right now. So, you know, part of the reason we wanted to have you here is is, is that story in and of itself is, is your transformation. So tell me. Over the last year, you have made LinkedIn, you know, really a, a priority in your presence on LinkedIn. Why now and what advice uh, would you give to other B2B marketers or frankly, any customer facing professional that is wondering whether it's worth the time and investment to be on social? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of why now, Eric, I think, you know, this whole global pandemic and COVID has really forced all of us to have to network and connect online. Uh, so we're just we're living in a virtual world and social is not going to go away. I also think that businesses have really started to go global. So using myself in as an example, I have colleagues and clients really around the globe that I may never get the opportunity to meet in person. So virtual and digital is my only option uh, as a B2B marketer. It's been important to me because it's part of my job to walk the walk. So if I am going to advise my executives and my practitioners on their social presence, it's really important that I have one of my own uh, so that I can speak about it firsthand and leverage my experience in social to help them. And really my advice for any professional, not just marketers, if you want to grow your career today, uh, you're going to be expected to have a point of view and a perspective on your area of expertise, whether that be from your colleagues and coworkers or your current employer, your clients, you know, your future employer. The first place that people go today is online to get an understanding of, of what you know and who you are. And so LinkedIn is a great platform to demonstrate what you know, who you know, but more importantly, today it's become a platform to demonstrate who you are. And I think that's really, really critical today because it's no longer a site that you post your resume on. It's really become a place to engage, to learn and to network if it's if it's used in the right way. Cool. Well, you know, the the other question I have right now is and this is one that we really didn't have uh, you know too much of a challenge with in, in the coaching uh, that that we did together uh, is is barriers. You know, uh, you fully embraced this. You wanted this. You you wanted to learn social. So that's not the case for everybody. Unfortunately, a lot of people need to see proof. They need to see tangible results, return on investment, whatever. Uh, what do you think is the biggest barrier that, you know, people face, you know, stakeholders, uh, you know, people on your team? What do you think that is? Yeah, well, I don't think it's going to be news to you, Eric, but I think the biggest barrier that we've all heard is I don't have the time. Right. And, and one of the lessons I've learned in life is that when people say that they don't have the time, it's really just another way of saying it's not a priority for me. So I think, you know, you have to sit back and think, why is this not a priority? So for me, with the practitioners that I work in, work with, um, I know firsthand that they spend time on social media sites like Facebook or Instagram. But when it comes to LinkedIn, nobody seems to have the time. And I think one of the reasons why that is, is because they're not using LinkedIn in the way that it's intended, right? They're not seeing the benefits. And they're just using it as a tool to broadcast, whether it be third party content or a place to post their resume. And I mean, that's not fun, right? So it's no wonder that they're not really engaging. So if you're doing it wrong, it's not going to be fun. But then you see the people that are doing it right, right? The people that 
know what their brand is, that are engaging in a meaningful way, that are getting creative uh, with their content and their messaging, those are the people that start to have results. And so I use it as sort of a, um, uh, basically like working out, right? So if you are working out and you are starting to see results, you may drop a few pounds, you may put on a few muscle, a uh, few muscles, that happens after time, right? And so I think it's the same with the activity on LinkedIn, right? It's gonna take a little bit of time before you see results, but once you start to see them, it's great motivation to keep going. And then it becomes fun and then it becomes fulfilling. Um, because you're reaching people, you're helping them, whether it's helping to educate them on your area of expertise or helping them to build their network through yours. So that's, that's basically what I think is the main barrier. Yeah, well, that's a uh, great analogy to the uh, the workout, you know, philosophy, you know, um, one analogy that, of course, that I use uh, as well. Um, you know, you have to have a routine and uh, you have to be consistent at it and you have to have you know, certain kind of expectations and, and uh, you know, have to do the right things in order to, to, to see results. Yeah. So tell me, based on, on that, I mean, you have a great way that you're um, internalizing this. And this is, again, like I said, part of your DNA now. And, and maybe not everybody has had the opportunity to have, a, a, you know, coaching or something like that to kind of help kind of bring this to the, you know, a, a certain level. But based on where you're at right now, and I'm sure you're trying to leverage this for maybe your teams, you know, and, and, and some executives that you know, how have you found a way, you know, to sell executives, you know, on this and becoming more active on LinkedIn? Right. Well, you know, Eric, I think we hear a lot when we talk about LinkedIn now uh, these days about social selling, uh, around building a personal brand, uh, about networking. And I think, you know, all of those things are great selling points. But I do think that the platform is so much more than that. And what I don't hear a lot about is LinkedIn as an educational tool. And so, of course, there are things like LinkedIn learning. But aside from that, I can say personally, I have learned so much from people on LinkedIn. Uh, and I hope that they've learned from me as well. So it's actually become my newsfeed. And that's how I sell it to my executives. So if you really think about it, you are getting based on, um, you know, based on the LinkedIn news feed, um, you're getting news and information on areas that you're interested in from people that you hopefully know and trust. And, you know, I use inclusion and diversity as a great example for me. Uh, that is a topic that, as you know, I'm incredibly passionate about, and it's one that I post about regularly. Um, but it's also a topic that I've learned a ton about from so many experts on LinkedIn. So when I sell this to my executives, yes, there's the social selling, there's the networking, there's the personal brand aspect, but also I'm working with executives that also want to be in the know, right, in their field. And so it's a great news feed. It's also a great way to share your expertise. Absolutely. And one of the, the side benefits uh, of doing what I do is being able to uh, show somebody uh, something that they've never seen before and get them excited about it, get them to start really practicing it, and then showcase that individual like you as uh, an actual ambassador or, you know, someone who is uh, an influencer right now. I think that's where you're headed. And I'm you know, very proud of your progress, obviously. Yeah. So now you can become an influencer within your network. And that being said, what is one or two tips that you think would be helpful for someone, you know, who is on the fence or on the sidelines of social right now? Well, first of all, that's kind of you to say, so thank you. I'd love to become an influencer at some point. Um, and I think, you know, I could talk about uh, social media and LinkedIn all day. I, I have, I've created my 10 commandments of social, but I'll only give you two because I know we don't have the time for all of <laughs> them. Um, so the, the first one I will say, Eric, is know the top three things that you want to be known for, right? What are the three things that you want to be famous for? And really make that your guiding principle for everything that you do on LinkedIn. So from content to commenting to sharing, that really is a great North Star. And then the second tip is know who your audience is and understand what they care about. <clears throat> so there is so much focus on building a network. And I think you and I both know it's not just about the numbers. It's about people that really care about the things that you care about and people that are going to want to engage with you. So I think if you can kind of marry those two, 
the thing that you want to be known for and the people that actually care about those things joining your network, I think that is the key to success. Well, I couldn't agree more. And, uh, you know, it's always great to have some of these learnings being put into put into practice. And, and I think what you've given is is absolutely uh, spot on. So, Joe, I want to thank you very much for your time today and your insights. And, uh, you know, keep going uh, and keep rocking social. Thanks for having me, Eric. It was a pleasure. Absolutely a pleasure, Joe. 